Right folks, so today we'll be looking at integration by parts. This will be the first video where we'll look at it uh, and we'll look at how we can use the rule. So integration by parts comes from using the product rule for differentiation and you can see that the rule for the product rule is up the top there. Now if we integrate both sides with respect to x, we'll get uv on the left and then we have to the integral both parts on the right hand side. And then if we rearrange, you can see we have our formula which is integral of u dv by dx equals u times v subtract the integral of v du by dx. Okay, now in previous videos I've used dash notation, especially when I've done the product rule and portion rule. So you can see on the right hand side I wrote it down in terms of dash notation, which I'll use a lot in my video. Okay, so it's the same thing here. So when you look closely at the formula, you'll see that you have a choice for making your, your want to be your u and your v dashed. You're going to have to differentiate the u to get u dashed and you want to integrate v dash to get back v. So the choices you make, your aim is to always reduce your powers of any, so x squares become x's, x become constants, and therefore you want to try and make something like that your u function, okay? If you look at both your functions and you cannot integrate or differentiate both, you may be restricted, you've got to then go with what is there, okay? But look at a few examples, we'll show you that there. So pause the video, how many time to write that down, and then we'll come back and look at the first example. Okay, so first example, I need to integrate, I've got x and I've got sine x multiplied there with uh, respect to dx, with okay, respect to x there. So I'm going to make my u function, start again, I'm going to make my u function the value x, okay, and the reason why is going to differentiate that and I'm going to reduce the power and that's going to become a 1, okay. Then the other rule has to be v dash. We don't like v dash below v, so I'm going to have v dash along there. That's going to become sine x. And to get back v, I need to integrate sine. And if I integrate sine, I get negative cos. Okay, so we need to know that from our higher there. So we're going down this way. We're differentiating. Oh, thank you. U dash, thank you. So we're differentiating that way and we're integrating that way, okay? So what's slightly different from when we did the product rule for differentiation, okay? We had to get a u and a v dashed. Okay, so now let's go and work out what this would give us here. So the integral of x sine x, respect to x, is going to be u multiplied by v, subtract the integral of v multiplied by u dashed with respect to x, okay? So u times v, okay, that's going to be x times negative cos x, so that'll be negative x cos x. And I'm going to subtract the integral of v u dashed, okay, and you can see v u dashed will be 1 times negative cos x, so it's negative cos x dx there. Okay, so I've substituted everything into my expression there. Okay, now at this point you've actually got a choice, you can just integrate like normal, or I always do a bit of tidying up if I can. So I'm going to bring that negative that's still an integral outside, that's going to bounce off the other one and make that positive, so it's integrating positive cos x dx, okay, and then if I integrate cos x, okay, then I'm going to get positive sine x. Then just know my knowledge from higher, plus a constant c. Okay, so we've got a constant c as well that we'll have from the integration. Okay, so that's just the first example there. Looking at the formula and substituting it, and then we've always got a second integration to do at the end. Okay, so that's quite a basic one. Okay, we didn't have too much hard work to actually differentiate or integrate. We'll look at a second one now that required something from a advanced higher course already, and we'll see which one we picked to be our u and our v dash. So. Okay, example two, we're going to integrate x multiplying by e to the power 6x, okay, with respect to x there. So again, I need to pick what I'm going to make my u to get my u dashed, and also to pick what's going to be my v dashed to give me my v back, okay. So again, looking at both terms, okay, x I can differentiate and integrate, same with the exponential, okay, but if I differentiate the x, the power goes down. The power won't change when I either differentiate or integrate e to the x, e to the 6x, so I'm going to keep that to be the thing that I integrate. So u is going to be x, and my v dash is going to be 
e to the 6x. Okay, so that's what I'm picking here to be there. Okay, so again, I need to differentiate going downwards. I need to integrate going back up the way. Okay, so if I differentiate x, I'm going to get u dash, which will just be 1. If I integrate e to the 6x, okay, so the differential of the power, which is 6, comes down and divides, so it's going to be a 6 e to the 6x there. Okay, that's what I get if I choose those uh, options that way around. Okay, let's now go and use the formula again. So, to integrate x e to the 6x, it's going to be u times v minus integral of v u dashed, respect to x. Okay, so let's plug it in. Okay, u times v is going to be x times a sixth e to the six x, so that's going to be x over six e to the six x. Okay, so u times v minus the integral of v u dashed, which is going to be just a sixth e to the six x with respect to x. Okay, so that's what I get when I substitute into my formula. Okay, let's now integrate. That thing there. So the first thing won't change, it's probably better for me to write it as 6x, 8x though. Minus, okay, so I need to integrate this thing again. So again, the 6 will come down and divide, so it's going to actually be 1 over 36. E to 6x. Plus c. Okay, so I get that there as well. Okay, now... That is the question finished, but you can also tidy up and take a common denominator out if it works, okay? And I can actually take a sixth, e to the six x out of both. I'd be left with an x there, and I'd be left with minus one over six in the end there, okay? Close bracket, plus c. Okay, so that's me got that one just tightened up a bit more. Okay, especially as a second part of the question, it's always worth doing so. So there's two examples uh, I've done. I do have a third one in the notes that's attached to uh, all the resources, but I'm going to do the fourth one with you now where you're going to see that we don't have a choice in what we require to be our two functions. So let's look at, it's going to be example three for us, but it's the fourth one in the notes. Let's integrate x log x. Okay. So, integration by parts, two things multiplying each other. I need to carefully select my u, and I need to carefully select my v dash. Okay. So, if you look at both your terms, well, x I can differentiate or integrate, that's fine. But log, the only thing I can do with log is differentiate log. I cannot integrate log, so the log is going to have to be my u function. Normally, I prefer the x to be the u function, but in this case, I wouldn't be able to integrate log, it's got to go there, okay? So therefore my v dash needs to be x, okay? So I need to integrate that back up, so. Remember, differentiate this way. Integrate, going back up the way. Okay, right. If I integrate, sorry, if I differentiate log, you've got that on your formula sheets this year, you get one over x. If I integrate x, I get half x squared. Okay, just from higher last year. Half x squared. Okay, so that way we don't have a choice. We've got to use it like that there. Right, so let's integrate x log x. Respect to the So that's going to be uv minus the integral v u dashed. Respect to x. Okay, u times v. Okay, I'm going to get a half x squared log x. Okay, if I multiply u and v together. And in the integral, I'm going to get v u dash, so it's going to be a half x squared, multiplying 1 over x dx. Okay, so that's me just substituting my formula. I'm going to tidy that integral up first. Which the x would cancel out with each one, so therefore I'm going to get a half x with respect 
get to x. Okay, so I've just tidied that up before integrate. Now let's do it. So I'm going to get a half x squared. All x minus, okay, so integrate x, we're going to get power squared there. Divide it by 2, so that half is going to become a quarter plus c. Okay, so we're going to get a plus c there. And again, we could take a common denominator out of a half x squared, which will leave me with log x minus a half, then plus a constant c as well. Okay, so here's an example of when you don't always have a choice, you've got to pick the right one in the position because of the limitations of a function. Are you okay with that?